The Panama Canal is one of history's great feats of engineering. Connecting the Atlantic and the Pacific, the canal represented a major change in trade between East and West, saving time for many states and damaging the economies of others. It was finished by the United States in 1914, and these lands in Panama around the canal were under US sovereignty until 1999, because in 1977 President Jimmy Carter had agreed to return it to Panama in return for exactly nothing. But given how useful controlling the canal was, especially during the Cold War, why did the United States do this? Why did the USA give up the Panama Canal for free? So, since Europeans had first discovered the New World, they had dreamed of building a canal straight through Central America. It never happened because digging is quite hard, and digging through a continent is even harder. This didn't stop the French from stepping up in the late 19th century though since they had just finished building the much longer Suez Canal. The problem with this canal was the environment. Disease and terrain meant that the cost of building the canal soon spiralled out of control and it wasn't long until the French gave up. In stepped the USA under Theodore Roosevelt who wanted to finish the canal to expand US influence in the region. His government tried to strike a deal with the Colombian government but they said no. This forced him to respect their wishes and oh wait no, rebels. In the north of the country the Panamanians had revolted to achieve independence and the US decided that it was going to help them, providing that they got the canal and control over the territory around it. And the new Panama government said yes since without US support Colombia would have reconquered the country. The canal was finished in 1914 and it remained under US control until 1999. During this time, the canal had been incredibly useful, especially in World War II when it allowed US ships to easily cross between the Atlantic and the Pacific, and the US also used it to block communist warships in the Cold War. Plus, over the decades, the transit fee to use the canal had made the US government lots of money. Yet, in 1977, after decades of negotiations, President Carter agreed to a phased handover of the canal zone back to Panama in return for nothing. So why? Well, there were several reasons. The first was diplomacy with the rest of the Americas. American control of the canal zone, particularly the military bases which were there to protect it, was seen as imperialist by most nations in Central and South America. That and the Suez Crisis from a couple of decades earlier had cemented the idea that the world's waterways should be neutral. Carter wanted to return the canal to Panama to assure the rest of the Americas that the United States was going to be a good neighbour, and to also make sure that they wouldn't make friends with the USSR. Which brings us to point number two, competition. Part of the 1977 treaty stipulated that the US would make the canal neutral to all nations, which meant letting communist navies use it too. Carter agreed to this because he was concerned that the USSR would finance another canal in either southern Panama or potentially Nicaragua. As such, agreeing to hand it over in 20 years meant that building another canal wouldn't be worth it. And furthermore, the US could keep collecting transit fees during that time. The third reason was military. The Panama Canal was important to American naval strategy since it allowed for quick redeployment of its ships to different oceans. However, in the days of nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles, it was no longer as important. As such, to Carter's administration, the cost of keeping the canal outweighed the benefits and it was decided that it would be handed over. And after this, despite some grumblings, the USA was treaty bound to hand over the canal, a process which would be completed by the end of the millennium, which meant that after this, Panama would go from being politically cut in half to just geographically. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with a special thanks to my patrons James Bizanet, Kelly Moneymaker, Corsho Wolf, Jordan Longley, Adam Stalter, Jerry Lambdin, Marcus Arsner, Wyan Hockey, Spencer Lightfoot, Words About Books Podcast, Gustav Swan, Captain Psydog, Rod D. Martin, Kamoon Yoon, Boogily Woogily, Mrs. Et, Marvin Cassow, Aaron the White, Matthew Shipley, Alex Schwinn, Maggie Patskowski, Anthony Beckett, Max and Flaudio, The McWhopper, Corey Turner, Spinning Three Plates, Copper Tone, Winston Kaywood, Charles I and Scottish Trekkie.